What up my freaks, Ruana Sensei here with part 14 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Serena Catrin Immortal Empires campaign. Ooh, gross uh, Nurgle volcano. Uh, but anyway, as we saw last time, the uh, uh, the Wintertooth have been destroyed, or at the very least we destroyed the last army remaining to Throg and we had one uh, sort of minor siege battle that we couldn't auto-resolve at the end of last episode, and as promised I did do it between the episodes. Throg is now gone and uh, we can move on into Norska proper or at least that's what we'd like to do um, but these guys are coming for us the Legion of Chaos and we have to well it would be a good idea to destroy them all together I'm a little bit concerned about Malice really disliking us and the reason I'm concerned about this is that he seems to be friendly or at least allied uh, or allied or at least friendly I should say with a lot of the nearby Chaos factions he's only directly allied with Nagarond um, but he is uh, not liking the fact that we're attacking Throg. He seems to have a good relationship with the Tallyman and decent relationship with the uh, uh, with the Legion of Chaos as well, which ain't great because we were potentially going to give him these chaotic wasteland territories and he might just declare war on us rather than bother. The problem with leaving everything to ruin uh, in the Chaos Wastes is that if you do, you can't really uh, stop the enemy from just resettling it and unless you wipe everything out and we can't just forever babysit it so we'll keep on trying or we will try with malice and see if we can get it to work really unfortunate not to have boris versus as a separate faction to be given and the relatively useless otherwise in chaos wastes anyway uh, another interesting thing is that we saw that archaeon well disappeared as uh, he was over here and now he's gone we don't know where he went but do we if we go to diplomacy and take a look at the war coordination we can take a look at the allied mission we have Hivald Bainhasser, uh, wait, and Archeon down here, meaning if we zoom on in, we know that his main stack is right around here somewhere, so he is liable to take the same exact path that uh, we did, or that, that we did, that the cool did to try to come down here either to the Temple of Heimkel or to the Frozen Landing, so we'll have to keep an eye on him, and by virtue of that. I am still tempted to take one of these missions, though, 26 allegiance for attacking Hivald. And yes, it's with the Greater Orthodoxy, but maybe we'll actually borrow an army of theirs. Although it is nice to be able to keep an eye on Archon like this. Knowing where he is means hopefully right now we can send the uh, uh, the scouting patriarch here and to find him and keep an eye on him for us. Otherwise, let's see what else we have to do this turn. I don't believe there's much, if anything. You guys are getting ready to move back towards Hivald, and yeah, I guess we're good to go for now. All right, well then, uh, skip on assigned skill points, building upgrades and outposts available. We got a new tech coming up next turn as well. And we do have a decent bit of cash that we can now invest into several territories to make us that money, which uh, we certainly need. And yeah, you know, I was thinking we're probably not going to bother defend this, defending this. I mean, I really don't want to waste all of our 15k or whatnot just to defend this one territory. Uh, so Because we could recruit a lord, lose the lord potentially, plus all the regiments of renown. Even if they do win, it's such an investment. And it would be an even bigger investment to keep them around as well. So I think screw it. We'll just have Victor Zem and retake it as needed. And that's about it. End turn. And of course, while the turn is ending, we did reach the engagement threshold just barely this time, or at least are uh, heading towards it. So, of course, this will be an hour-long episode as well. And the offer stands 350 likes and 50 comments. And the next episode will also be an hour long. Ungram Iron Fist wants us to join the war against Strip and Fang. Surprised it's not against Sylvania this time around. But as long as he's keeping Sylvania distracted... Where the heck did you come from? Yeah. Well, that's not great. You're attacking Carrick Doom. Carrick Doom will probably fall here. Hmm, we could just auto-resolve, but I feel like if we fight this, we could probably at least delete a few of these units. At the very least, the demonic units, although it's just a... Uh, uh, yeah, nonetheless, let's fight this real quick. Probably gonna speed through it. On the other hand, we do have walls. Might be fun to... Uh, might be fun to watch the last stand of these guys as well. Eh, why not?
this lab has endured. Why would the we ever quiver before the these food shops? All right, here we go. We are uh, not going to win this, and we're probably not even looking towards winning this, so I'm going to uh, speed this up most of the time. But what we are looking to do is damage this army as much as possible so that it is not viable to move around by itself and help RKN out in that light. We've only deployed two units over on this side of the map, and they're just there to sort of uh, hold the towers and allow them to fire upon the enemy, though these are Tier 1 towers, and they're probably not going to do a crazy amount, especially especially to the uh, things like trolls. On top of that, the enemy has a Chaos Sorcerer Lord and a uh, Chaos Sorcerer as well, and both of which are probably not prospects that we are going to be able to uh, uh, take down. We're going to send our Boyar in to try to distract this Lord, and we're going to see if we can't land a few shots on him uh, with this uh, Tier 4 Magic Tower. It is an Explosive Damage Tower rather than a Piercing Tower, but, you know, it does do... Okay, it does do decent damage to single entities if it hits them, uh, so we'll see if it does. Anyway, in the meantime, we are going to get absolutely overwhelmed on the walls, but once again, just trying to do as much damage as possible to critical units. Maybe knock a few of them out as best we can, plus we can get some nice little last stand shots for some of these uh, troops. Chaos Warriors of Slanish with Hell Scourge is going to climb up. They have that uh, uh, overwhelm effect on them, so these guys already do little damage and no armor piercing and they'll do even less to them and they'll just grind them down slowly over time uh looks like the chaos sorcerer lord is outdoing the boyar in terms of damage with the tower despite the tower firing upon him and once again it's looking like the uh, hits are uh, kind of missing generally speaking i tried to get these cossars to actually attack this lord here and shoot him in the back but it didn't seem to work out so we're going to move them over to this side and see if they can distract the chromatic aberrations instead all the while just continue to rain down as many arrows built from the towers and the cussers as we can to deplete uh, the enemy numbers out here and then the same thing over on this side though with the uh, and with much less units here it's probably not going to go super well still uh looks like this forsaken unit is pretty badly damaged down to about half hp and we might be able to knock that thing out for good Doggos and horsemen are not a particular priority, A, because they're not going to be particularly strong during battle, and B, because they won't be killed off. There's really no way that we can do that here, as they will lose sufficient units, and then at that point they'll route off the field, and then we won't be able to uh, give chase to them anyway. So it's the Chaos Warriors and stuff, and that have to take priority. Tower has retargeted to the Hell Scourges now, since the enemy lord is, uh, well, I was about to say dodged every shot, but in reality the tower just didn't have the accuracy to hit him. Hopefully it'll have enough accuracy to actually hit the uh, the enemies on the wall right here. They're blobbing up quite nicely for us, so don't waste in those shots, tower. Especially as these cussers won't hold out for too long. They do have 26 kills on them, though I'm willing to bet that those kills aren't so much the uh, Chaos Warriors as they are the uh, the more fragile units out there that are currently running away. Ooh, actually, this Marauder Horseman unit is destroyed. Lovely. Well done to the towers. This one with eight units, I believe, survives, and then same with the uh, uh, same with the Chaos Warrior, or same with the Chaos Warhounds as well. Chromatic Aberrations apparently trying to break through that gate, but that's going to take them a while. Lord is down to about half. FHP now, uh, which is a little bit better, and now that we've uh, been able, ooh, uh, point blank uh, blue fires, eh? uh, now that we've been able to get a few shots off from the Cossars into his back, and tower continues to fire, let's see what at, the projectiles look really cool, but they're not hitting much of anything, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame, but uh, what can you do, uh, better than the enemy sort of just blobs up, and uh, uh, sort of just blobs up in like a big blob rather than on the wall so that we can maybe not guarantee that the tower actually hits them, but, you know, uh, do a little bit better. Anyway, some of our Cossars have moved in. We do have enemy Forsaken out here. Hey, guys, shoot him. Shoot him in the back. They're right there. Please. Please. Game. 
Yeah, the game is uh, the game is often wonky when some of the units are up on a wall like this and uh, some of them are uh, and down on the ground. But there we go. It looks like the Cossars are finally willing to take a few shots at them. And as soon as they do, the enemy uh, Chaos Sorcerer Lord uh, decides to hit them instead. Uh, trolls have made their way through the gate, or rather the gate has been captured. And thus the trolls are moving in. We can continue firing down upon them rather than moving down ourselves. Another miss from the tower. Would you please... <laughs> we paid all of our defensive supply to get that tower up and running. Maybe I should have just gone with the... I'm not even sure, because the piercing tower, the Kislevite piercing tower, launches sort of lightning-like uh, projectiles, but they also arc over, and they're not, uh, they're not fast-moving, and they're not... Uh, Yeah, uh, they're not fast moving and uh, they're not direct fire either, which is generally speaking a good thing in the sense that the towers can actually. Ah, uh, uh, yes, finally. Uh, let's see. Looks like three of those guys knocked out, two of those guys knocked out, but still, and got a hit in there, finally. Uh, anyway, the uh, lightning projectiles that they launch are not lightning in the sense that it uh, uh, it travels quickly and is direct fire, but a very similar sort of shot to the magic damage type of tower. Maybe I should have just built a bunch of the regular towers, the arrow towers, and see how they did. Maybe they're a little bit more accurate? I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since I've built the, uh, uh, the Kislevite in settlement tower. Hours, so, and we'll see. Anyway, out here it looks like some of the Chaos Wars with Halber Halberds rather are in pretty bad shape, but at least in, that's only in terms of their HP. They still have plenty of models to work with. The other Chaos Sorcerer is working on our Cossars and they have no chance of really doing anything to him. And it looks like most of the enemy army is actually attempting to bypass our troops now and is running towards the capture points. This does make sense in the sense that the AI has a tendency to do this and ignore fighting the player in favor of just trying to run towards the objectives. It does work sometimes, I'd say rarely though, and uh, oftentimes this gets the AI to uh, to lose battles that it shouldn't. Ooh, Chaos Sorcerer Lord is shattered, but I... Hmm, we'll see if we can bring him out of the sky. It would be great to actually bring him down. Gilgas the Cleaver. Yeah, sounds like a Cornate name rather, name rather than a uh, Zincha name. Come on, keep on shooting them a few more shots. 558 HP. Uh, if only he went this way. No, nope, he's going to go inside the city. Damn. Unfortunate. If he had gone the other way, the towers would have knocked him out of the sky, but here we have no real way of knocking him down. Oh, well, at least we got him to shatter, but that's not going to make his army shatter, and certainly not going to make the units that are inside our settlement stop trying to capture points. All we can do is try to knock out whatever other units remain. There's a unit of uh, trolls unarmored here, and both our Khazars and un or our armored and unarmored Khazars are going to try to dish out damage to these guys. They're not sure what they're doing either. Yeah, the AI's being kind of wonky here. It, it tends to happen with these settlement battles. I don't want to take too much advantage of this kind of thing, though. Eh, because it feels cheesy. So we're just going to uh, do what we're doing and uh, allow the enemy to capture the, uh, the points if that's what the, they try to do. But still continue to shout damage you. Some... Huh, what was that? It was a Zinchin ability. Oh, right, that was a bound ability, wasn't it? And Chosen of Zinch, yeah, that's it. I wonder how much damage. Fires of Change gives them heal. Gives us heal. And, oh, wait. Oh, this is a different unit of Chaos Warriors of Zinch. I was like, wait a second, these guys have more HP than they did before, but it was actually the other, the Halberd-wielding Chaos Warriors that has le that had less HP. Unless the Fires of Zinch changed these guys, which, you know, uh, Zinch has done stranger things. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, the AI just being wacky in this particular battle. These guys are routing, or they're trying to route, but they're confused and sort of running into the uh, uh, running into the rock there. Anyway, I think this is about uh, uh, this is about clear what's happening. We're gonna move off the walls here. I'm just gonna speed this up and try to move towards the chromatic aberrations. They're ignoring our army here together as well, and are just going to try to go for the key building. And we'll just chase them down, try to get a few more shots of them actually fighting, if they're actually willing to uh, fight our units, and just charge them. 
if you can. And there we go, a few arrows moving in. We still have to knock out their barrier. They have a fair bit of HP, but they are just turned around and completely ignoring us in favor of capturing the settlement. Not to worry, we'll have some real fights. Probably in the future, if it's a fight like this, I will auto-resolve it, unless we have sufficient troops where we can uh, where we can put enough troops on the walls to win the fight. And there we go, they get a nice volley into our armored casters, bringing a few of them down. We should probably take a few more pistol shots, or just charge forth and use our axes while our regular unarmored casters move into support. We also have a lord around here, he's fairly low on HP, and it looks like his H, or leadership rather, is a dwindling as well. It would be difficult for the enemy blue... And not scribes, uh, blue horrors to bring the Lord down, but it looks like just by virtue of moving towards them, his leadership continues to drop. We have moved in with the armored cursor, so their axes will do a little bit of work while the arrows continue flying in from above, but just as our Lord moves in, his leadership drops to minus five, and he'll just randomly rout while nobody is attacking him. Oh, well, not a big deal. We can bring... Man, maybe I should have focused down the Chromatic Aberration since they are a demonic unit and they would melt away, but whatever. Once again, all good. Ooh, we can continue fighting. I still am used to units just routing, but because of by our blood. And these guys will continue to fight for a little while and maybe knock out a few of these blue horrors out yet. Alright, we've got eight more seconds to buy our blood, though these guys are very much running out of troops. Oh, still got 40 units in their number, then. And our lord has returned, though I'm not sure that he'd, uh, he'd be willing to fight anymore, since he wasn't able to close the distance with the enemy. And these guys are charging forth now, down to about half of their HP, and we're out of ammunition on the Cossars, and it looks like our Lord is routing again. We'll try to charge him forth, see if he does it on the second attempt, and he's shaken. We'll try to charge him into the enemy's uh, flank slash back while the Cossars, the unarmored Cossars, uh, do the work. If they're- hey, get- blue horrors, blue horrors, get back here. All right, a few of the Cossars take a few... Uh, they, the enemy takes a few hits, but they just keep running. And they're just gonna keep running. And they're just gonna keep ignoring us. <laughs> All right, folks, well, that's it for this particular battle. It's a, a bizarre fight, but uh, what can you do? We can't catch these guys because they run faster than our troops, and they'll just uh, they'll just end up capturing the, uh, the Victory Plaza with the trolls and stuff, which we wouldn't have been able to kill off without ammunition anyway. And there's another troll unit um, back there. All right, a weird little fight, and we uh, probably could have cheesed a win there if we wanted to, considering like half of our army was left alive uh, by the end of the battle, and the fact that the AI was behaving kind of weirdly, but at the end of the day, Golgaz did sort of get around our forces fair and square. I wasn't expecting him to appear here as I was expecting him uh, to be with Archie all the way up there. And once again, there's a reason we didn't invest in this territory. Uh, always having expected to uh, lose these places and the buffer zone of the Darklands, potentially. So it's not a big deal. Uh, he can have Carrick Doom and I'm sure it'll fall as soon as Serena Catrin arrives, which I'm sure will be relatively soon. Huh. Wait, where's Grimgore? What the? Oh! He wants Uzkalag. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, what is even his army? Mm, can't quite tell there. Settlement loss, Kyrgyz Doom, the Skull Road, Wild Hunt begins. Mm, upkeep reduction for war sleds, that's all fine. And next up, we still have this entire territory. And we still have all of... Okay, we still have the construction reduction Ataman in here. So, this territory, unlike this one, we can invest in. A little bit wary of doing so for Fort Dwarslav, but mm, I think we should still be fine. So we'll do that and build the Stenitsa up at Frozen Landing, as well as the Iron Mining... Oh, we have to choose between Iron Mining Pit and another market, eh? Nonetheless, go for the Iron Mining Pit and Fort Dwarslav. You know what? Build the farmstead for now. I think we can... 
No, the growth's okay. I was hmm, maybe actually a roadhouse would be a decent thing to build here, mostly because of the additional campaign movement range in province. Uh, we could super quickly grow the place and also super quickly move around. We can also get the trade quorum here as well. Because it's generally a decent investment. And looks like Hival Bainhauser has moved towards the frozen landing, which certainly works for us. Uh, let's see what else is going on out here before we continue. Mother Astankia. You can move into the Tower of Crack, wherein you will start building your things in the woods. We're going to send you, sir. Gavril Talichev to Castle Alexandrinov, and you'll go on and sail and grab that fell cargo for us real quick. All right, Anastanka, how many... No, they're not that expensive to recruit. I mean, they're more expensive than I'd like, but still not that expensive. And we can reduce them further by getting you a Step Shepherd. I suppose I'd love to get you a couple of uh, Hag Witches as well, but I think at their current cost is 400 gold per turn. We don't actually reduce the... Uh... Reddit removes immunity to psychology. That's kind of interesting. Huh. Wait, but it removes immunity to psychology. It wouldn't remove fear and terror, meaning eh, not quite as good. Ooh, nature spirit affinity gives us 10% casual to a punishment rate. This is very much needed. I'm just not sure I want the death lore in this particular army. What's this called? This is called nature spirit affinity. All right, perhaps we'll try to look for a nature spirit affinity one. I also kind of like the uh, spirit caller bleed effect plus bound flock of doom on a hag witch of beasts, which means more flock of doom. And a hag witch of beasts with the uh, uh, with the things in the woods does make sense. Mm -hmm. It's really tempting. Okay, you know, we'll see what we have in terms of money remaining, and we'll go. But we also need a bunch of things in the woods in this army, plus the... Uh, uh, plus uh, the Mordheim Beowulfs. But we'll get to that. Serena Katrin, it's time to fight once more. We'll knock out Hivald Bainhasser. We also now know that Archie is down here, though we can't quite see him anymore. Which way do we... I just go like this. There he is. Wait, you can't block armies, can you? No, you can wound things, but that's not going to happen. Archie will take the tribe slaughter and... Oh, we have defenses there. I mean, if you weren't busy with Grimgor, you're going to have to go and conquer Grimgor's territories. We could send Yorogni to tribe slaughter, but I think Archie's army plus this army is going to be too much. He can defend Karak Vlag instead, as tribe slaughter is part of a territory that we weren't looking to invest in or hold until Serena Katrin arrives to do it for us. Speaking of Serena Katrin, uh, let's get her the 50% reduction to... Uh, uh, to which I'm call it? To attrition trait from defeating Hivald. So go right there. You're gonna move in and act as a reinforcement just so that we can, uh, uh, just so that we can leech the XP a little bit, especially with the profit thing that we have up and running. Do you have to be in full speed stance? You do. Do we need any of this? I guess you can have inspiring presence for this particular fight, help out in that manner, and we'll level you up and eventually use you as a lord. And go for Hivald. Should be a nice fight. What do we have here? Wow, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 regiments of renown. 12 regiments of renown. Man, AI, why are you like this? This is silly. And uh, this isn't the first time this guy's been doing that eh, either, but yeah, damn, that's a lot of regiments of renown. Let's see how they stay, stack up against the sled. or failure fight until your last breath all right here we go slay gliding over the water they're gonna few shots off with those ice guard as we move on and uh, once again and to be completely infuriating with uh, serena katrin's uh, uh, amount in this way gonna slow down the enemies a little bit and see what we can do to separate in the enemy army as we normally do so the war sleds heavy war sleds are working over on this side gonna try to knock out those shrieking sky rays though we could really use some magical damage damage on the uh, on the heavy war sleds if we can get a lichbone pennant we should probably put it on one of the war sleds to dish out additional damage i mean it would be nice to have a lichbone pennant in pretty much every army but uh, uh, for now anyway it looks like the screamers drop down among the war sleds but the war sleds can simply keep on moving and uh, keep on firing as well they're not really threatened by any of this 
They have 158 armor after all, and though their melee defense is low, you have to get through that armor and you have to keep attacking them while they move as well. Besides the Golden Knight and our other single entities, our Patriarch and our uh, Frost Maiden are here, separated from Serena Catrin, but now that she's on the sled, they just can't keep up. Whereas on the Frostworm, uh, there's a reasonable chance that they fight together in a uh, blob. Serena Katrin can function essentially on her own like this. Got 31 kills to her and 39 kills to her name. 54k. Yeah, she just dropped a spell. And uh, 24k damage. Nothing crazy. But a solid hailstorm on some enemies, and there's the Charge of the Wind Hussars uh, moving in to help the uh, uh, the heavy war sleds, though once again they're not particularly heavily damaged at all, at most having lost 15% of their HP and Serena Katrin uh, still moving around. There we go. Man, that thing requires a ton of micro, though. But anyway, uh, anyway, we are stuck, and now we've summoned snow leopards and are using our regular snow leopards on summoned ones as well. It looks like the enemy decided not to separate ourselves. We had a really decent deployment spot here with some uh, impassable terrain and close to where our reinforcing lord was coming in. And, but it looks like since the enemy will not go for our infantry, we're going to have to bring the infantry to them. That said, the enemy army is in pretty bad shape already. The sibilant slaughter cade is pretty much done for. Uh, to Two of the units of doggos, including the hounds of uh, the blood hunt, are out of there as well. And yeah, the doggos don't work so well against the heavy war sleds. They just uh, get ripped apart, especially with the winged hussars uh, helping them out. Danny Boy's in the middle of the fight as well, and we have sent the Golden Knight and to duel him. Ooh, I like the uh, uh, I like the shots from uh, the enemy horrors coming down above. And Danny Boy's lost about 20% of his HP, while Serena Catrim essentially uh, just glides around, going from enemy unit to enemy unit to annoy as many as she can. But she does drop a blizzard just to clear out the chaff. If nothing else, the blizzard does look like a really cool spell to fight in. Uh, clear out the chaff and allow our single entities to try to focus Daniel down. And even adds a few hits to the fray herself as well. Looks like more of the enemy units are moving in, and we've got a reinforcing lord or boyar uh, who's arrived. And finally, some ice guard have moved on and are going to start uh, pincushioning the enemy lord with their magical arrows. No physical resistance for you, sir. How's the Golden Knight doing? 19 kills and 6.3k damage so far. Decent gold value, though, because of attacking, I guess, uh, the enemy lord. But it looks like the rest of his army is in pretty darn bad shape. The heavy war sleds have managed to peel away now and are going after whatever other units remain. The Sour Guts and the Festering Stooges Exalted Plague Bearers. Mostly so that these guys can't add any range attacks to uh, to help the enemy. It looks like Danny Boy is melting away now and under fire from the Ice Guard will at last drop. And there we go. Now just a matter of cleaning up what other enemy units remain. As with the Danny Boy having shattered, the rest of his army will shatter as well. And the battle will be ours. At least as soon as the demons do get banished here. And, oh, wow, that one went flying. <laughs> and are you going to get back up again? You are going to get back up again. Not for long, I'd wager. There we go. Down you go. And it looks like it's the Nurgle units, the Festering Stooges, that are the last of the demonic units on the field, considering they were the tankiest of them. That does make sense. But uh, they weren't really able to achieve much as they were attempting to hit Serena Catrin for pretty much the entire battle as she glided around and then got charged by the heavy war sleds, which took damage, but I don't believe lost a single one of their sleds. Lovely. Oh, 
Ooh, a nice amount of cash for that, and another 4k as well. Yeah, we're definitely not passing up that opportunity. Serena Katrin got nearly 100,000 damage and 500 kills exactly. And while the Golden Knight dueled the uh, uh, the enemy lord for most of the time, Serena Katrin remained an absolute menace. Though I'm once again not sure whether the sled is uh, uh, is better than the Frostworm in terms of everything else. I did once again screw up a little bit with not uh, uh, not having having the various Ice Guard and Zarguard, Guard, well, our infantry line, closer to the lines, but usually, or at least in the last few times that Serena Katrin's fought her battles, uh, the enemy army usually halved itself to deal with the, uh, well, non-infantry half of the army, and the other half headed towards the infantry, but that didn't happen this time, so, and these guys didn't get the chance to play. Not to worry, though, uh, that'll change in other battles. Pardon captives, please, for more cash, and can we go back, ooh, just out of range of reaching the frozen landing, that's a shame, but at least we get the minus 50% which is very very valuable oh, yeah. yeah man we could have healed but oh well and if we had started in this province we would have also been able to move further but uh, there's just no way to do that here I think hey, another student and uh, nice you can go as close as you can and then we'll move on downwards or southward and uh, towards Archie you can land I guess at least you can move further and give that little tiny, tiny income from building bonus uh, that you have. Also, the Golden Knight. What do we have here? Common ground, common enemies gives us some more allegiance points with Kislev and the reduction to that Ursin's Claw ability. Mostly we're just trying to get to the uh, Kislev Unite ability that gives us the uh, melee attack and leadership in area. We really don't need this, do we? Uh, hmm. Oh, this army is no longer recruiting. It's not much of an army, but it is a, well, free, quote-unquote, army. So you know what? We will take you. Request army. And uh, can you move immediately? You can move immediately. Beautiful. Send you around this way. And the of the Defender, you have places to be. I don't think anybody can catch you here. At least nobody can get close enough to you. And Serena Catron moves pretty fast, so we should still be pretty okay. And we can use this army, sacrifice it as needed. Oh, what we can't do is lose the Frost Maiden, though, because we have limited capacity for Frost Maidens. We need any Frost Maiden we can get from the Confederation, which will happen relatively soon. We're at 417 out of 600. Uh, probably be able to Confederate within the next couple of episodes, finally. And Castelton can start building a proper stack, because whatever he's been doing, it ain't been good enough. Uh, you, Vladimir Mikheyev, I would like you... Okay, wait. Since we're not currently at the... Hmm... Curious. Altar of Spawns. How much is it worth to you? 11k? Not bad for a territory we would inevitably trade back. I might actually give that to these guys. Yeah, they're our enemies, but if they're willing to fund our expansion before we declare war on them, that wouldn't be too bad. And funnily enough, that might make Malice like us more. It would be something that the other nearby factions don't uh, particularly like, or at least the Order factions, but it's still something worth considering. Anyway, Igor, you are going to trade the Wolf Hearts for the Cossars with Spears. Yes, that weakens Vladimir Mikheyev's army, uh, but this guy is going to have to start building his own army, so yeah. You can go here. And... Actually, if we set sail, we should be able to land at the Port of Secrets next turn. We are damaged, but not so damaged, I think, that we shouldn't do this. So. Oh, wow. 700 gold from not being garrisoned, eh, in terms of additional cost. But what can you do? Head to the Port of Secrets. We gotta start uh, stacking, looting, occupying the territories of these guys so that they don't come back. Gotta knock out these enemies. Igor. You are going to move down here because Mother Estanka is currently holding a decent amount of your troops. Estanka, start on those things in the woods. We don't have... well, it'll be a while before we can get too many of them, but because... Did we get the first of the Mordheim Beowulfs now to reduce the uh, time it takes to get the next one? I wish they weren't so expensive, but I feel like we should. There we go. Plus, we've been wanting those things in the woods on field for a while now, so it feels like it makes sense. Victor Zemvin, ye well, I was going to send Yorogni to help you, but if Yorogni has to return to Kirik Vlag, because we have invested in Vlag, we actually don't want it to get taken by Archaon, unlike these other territories. Well, potentially for Dvorslav, uh, but uh, I do think this means you need to stick around. And this army, you could actually destroy with uh, Yorogni and Blood of the Defenders troops. And there's potential for that. So, Zamvin, 
You're gonna go for Grimbor. Grim, Grimbor. Uh, <laughs> hopefully his fight ain't boring. Uh, you're gonna go for him by yourself, though. Let's uh, do a little bit of investing in whatever else we are doing. Ah, Mikhaila Fedekova. Try that steel tech again. Ooh, we're up to 3% now. Used to be 2. Still 3 here. Still 3 here. Damn, 37, 37. What the heck happened? Did these guys get a tech or something? 3 and 40. 3 and 40. I wonder what White Peak is that. Alright, hopefully she doesn't die. Alright, well, no, she still succeeded. Hey, and she got a student as well. Well done, Michaela. You're carrying our technology on your back alone, effectively. And we'll probably stop relative. Well, not soon, but uh, once we get to a max out scholar. Even though you do have 10 turns, we could probably save a little bit of that cash. Roddy Pajarski, now that you've found Archie, you can start heading down here as you are going to join your Rogni's force as his second patriarch. Yoragni, I may or may not move you. We're going to have to figure that out. Uh, where are our investment guys? So, you. Ataman. The money guy. Uh, you can probably move out of here the next turn, and I guess go to Eastern Oblast. Actually, isn't all... No, there isn't a lot of investment here. We could move you to Kislev and reduce the costs there and finally build up the uh, Tier 5 of the city. Yeah, you know, that's probably the thing to do. And we do have a little bit of money, and if we use the Tallyman to fund it further, and that would be a decent choice. So then afterwards, we can go here to Troll Country and start building stuff up there. And if we remove Purge the Steps and pop it into Awaken the Land, it'll get down to one turn anyway, so that'll be fine. All right, so Ataman, you, sir, with the public order. Where do we need public order? Uh... Oh, this isn't a full territory anymore. All right, go to River Linsk for now. More public order with Erengrad, I guess. Oh, you actually make us a little bit of extra cash now, so then you should go somewhere where you make us more money, which is gonna be... Wait. Wait. You give us no extra money. Meaning, we'll swap you out. Uh, you are going to go, let's say, to River Linsk. You money guy are going to go to our most money-making province. And construction reducer guy, which is funnily enough also our biggest money guy, is going to go to River Erskoy to reduce the costs at Kislev itself. All right. It's not going to reduce it by a crazy amount, but, uh, well, hopefully it'll still be worth it. Then, do we need to build anything else? I mean, we're not investing in these just because the Darklands territories are somewhat liable to fall, though the Trade Quorum by itself... Nah, but then we don't produce... Well, we do produce gems here. Hmm, it's only 10%. Nah, you know what? It would still take too long for it to pay for itself. Uh, for now, I think it's just not worth our time. I'm gonna think about trading the Altar of Spawns to these guys. It's a lot of money for a territory that we would... ...retake with a quick little auto resolve. And we wouldn't be investing in it right now. Anyway, I'm, I'm honestly kind of thinking of the same with the Winter Pyre. Hmm. It's the interior territories that we need to build. And oh, actually, speaking of interior territories to build, uh, let's remove the building at Krakadrak. Let's build the first of the uh, market squares here. We could probably start popping up the... Oh, man, I wish it weren't so expensive, but... Nonetheless. Even without the reduction, I think we'll build it here. Uh, just because we can't have the reducer Ataman everywhere all at the same time. You can only be in one place at once. Uh, okay, we'll pick a tech after. I want to see if Grimgore is willing to fight this. Victor, go. You're going to have to do this without your Rogni, so you're going to have a much tougher time than you did previously, so you best be careful, bud. And no! Grimgore, you little coward. I can see why you would run from your Rogni, but... Victor? Uh, it's just piles of Khazars. Usually the auto-resolve doesn't... Uh, isn't so afraid of this. I wonder where his other army went. Hmm. You can't reach him, can you, Yuragni? No. Hmm. Beledna the Defender will not get to Fort Dwarslav next turn anyway, even in March stance. Which makes me think that... 
Okay, Fort Dwarslav has no defenses. And this guy will probably move towards it, or possibly towards Tribes. Right, you know what? Yeah, then we're going to cancel this at Fort Dwarslav, since Blood and the Defender can't ferry the extra troops for Yorogni to deal with this. Honestly, he'd probably win the fight against this guy. It's just Archeon that's the problem. But Archeon, assuming, will sack or raise Tribe Slaughter and then be able to hit this next turn, so we wouldn't be able to move away. At least not until Serena Katrin gets here. It just makes me think that maybe we want to go down here and uh, hunt down Grimgor. You know what? You're gonna go down here. We might be able to bait him into a fight. Maybe not this turn, but possibly next turn. I'm disappointed that Grimgor ran, but not to worry, we'll run him down in turn. And yeah, you know, we will, uh, since we're about to spend an insane amount of cash at Kislev, we will trade you the Altar of Spawns. While you're still willing to give us tons of cash for it. Huh, I wonder if we could get you to declare war on anybody. Uh, break defensive, no, there's no way that they fight each other. There's no way, right? Break defensive alliance with Legion of Chaos. And join war against Legion of Chaos. Minus 132. Yeah, they're not doing that. Wait, what the heck? Break defensive alliance with Legion of Chaos. That shouldn't be free. That seems buggy. Okay, I'm not going to do that because it seems like a bug. Uh, I feel like he wouldn't do it for free because they're quite friendly and in an alliance together. That seems odd. Yeah, it seems odd, so I won't. Uh, let's just let's just trade you the thing. You're not gonna fight anybody, I don't think. I wonder if he'd fight. Uh, I wonder if he'd fight Wolfric. A moment. Join war against World Walkers. Minus one seventy nine. Yeah, okay, that's not happening. That's not happening. I'd rather have the money. Uh, no, not offer payment. Trade. Winter Pyre was it, or was it Altar? Of, it was Altar of Spawns. I forgot briefly. Altar of Spawns. Money. There you go. Epidemius. I'm sure he appreciate that. <laughs> oh, our friendly factions won't like that one bit, and it will be a province that he wants, but, you know. I think it'll be worth it. More investment into more stuff. Anyway, I think we can epic tech and then go to the next turn. The tech is the only choice, Gospodar governance, so we don't really care about the construction of the hallowed wood stru structure reduction, and we care about moving into this stuff to get breach loaders and the significant impact and that that makes on the uh, uh, the damage of our gunpowder units and non-gunpowder units as well. Just a generally good buff. All right, so we're going to catch on one more check. No, we can't move down here. <laughs> oh, all right, end turn now. Well, let's see if anybody can move towards us here. Maybe, hey, maybe Grimgor has another stack nearby and he'd be willing to fight. Alariel the Radiant will break our trade agreement. Elves. Elves. Why am I not surprised? Because they're elves. Alright, Archie, you're gonna go for tribe slaughter, but we'll ignore it. And I'm really curious to see what this guy does down here. Uh... Hmm... If we had Cav, I would fight this battle just to destroy the Hell Cannon, but since we don't have Cav, the only thing we could hope to do is, like, slightly damage these guys, and they'll all get killed by Serena Cadron anyway, so there isn't much purpose. I'll let him have it. Is he gonna sack it? That's good. That's very good, because that means he's stuck there for another turn, effectively. Wasting his time until Serena Catrin arrives. Ready for duty, Novgo Volkov, ready for decay. That's just the Ottoman moving around, and hey, Grimgor, you played yourself. Uh, the question is... Who gets to attack Grimgor? Now, Grimgor has a fighty trade, does he not? Who... wait. We defeated Grimgor before, but I don't remember who did it. Uh, was it Serena Katrin? Do you have Hide Striker? Yes, you do. Armor plus 5, all characters faction-wide, armor piercing weapon damage plus 50. That sounds like a Yorogni thing to me. So I think we're gonna send Yorogni to kill him. Though it does mean that Baladin is going to be a little bit further the way than uh, the way uh, away than we'd like for the turn. Let us move, Roddy Pujarski. Oh, Golgast, you're backing away. Bad idea, man. It's just going to give more time for Serena Katrin to reach you, and but reach you she will. Serena Katrin, move down here past the Temple of Heimkel. And whatever your name is, Madarin Azinov, you're going to move down here as well, and this little army as well. Now, you should be immune to the plague now, and it looks like the plague didn't spread, meaning you can go back into Awaken the Land for additional cash. And build the additional taverns for growth, since we have a little bit of cash remaining. Alright, you're going to go down here. The armies are moving in now. 
And just got to get Serena Katrin into the right place. Uh, for Dorslav, oh, and I canceled the investment there too. Game. <laughs> Why are you like this? You're just trying to screw me, and I'm the good way. You're Agne. Go kill Grimgor. Take back Fort Dorjnivort. I know. They rebuilt the defenses. Cute. Cute. Decisive defeat? I don't know about that. Facing off against Urogni here. He's got plenty of defensive units. It'll be a heck of a fight. A big fight. And a nice big fight. I heard you guys like him nice and big. Anyway, uh, let's move you on into Fort Dorjani Vort, and we'll hit you. Do you mean to level anybody up? You're actually saving your points. Hmm, so probably not. And there's probably a few other things to move around, but I think I'm more excited about the fight, so... In fight, we shall still valiant defeat. Well, and that'll probably just mean more money and XP and whatnot. Go. Or an axe. An axe in the skull would work uh, just as well. As well. Anyway, here we go. Grimgor and two stacks attempting uh, to defend the settlement. Now, we had trouble defending the settlement ourselves, but we had less than a stack against the enemies. Uh, two stacks, but this time and Grimgor has more than enough troops to defend it, should he desire. That said, we can simply walk up the main ramp all the way to the enemy key uh, point and see how long the the enemy will be able to hold us back, especially with Urogni in the lead. I think it'll be a pretty darn solid battle, uh, just by virtue of the fact that the enemy has massive numbers, and there's the fact that Grimgor is uh, there to uh, also provide Grimgor's wa repeatedly to the enemy faction for as long as we fight. And it's a pretty darn massive buff that we're going to have to repeatedly counteract with the uh, uh, with the Battle Kim of Tor. Anyway, I'm just going to speed it up while the rest of our army moves on to the field and takes formation. The enemy has no mage and no artillery piece, so we're free to blob up as much as we can. Really, the biggest danger to our own blob will probably be our own little groms accidentally firing into it, which is a distinct possibility, I will admit, so we'll have to be careful with them as well and maybe use them as single entities and uh, fighters rather than necessarily as artillery pieces. This uh, particular settlement may not look the uh, or may not be the best for defending it because it has too many entrances. But uh, like all the Chaos Dwarven settlements, it's a really nice atmospheric piece of uh, uh, terrain. I guess. Well, terrain. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, settlement. It's a very nice settlement, and uh, we'll have some great shots of fighting here. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit as we continue making our way forward. was hoping to soften a few of the enemy targets, namely the trolls, and with our little groms, but the enemy just continues to back off. And if that's what they want to do, they have lost some of the uh, orc boys here to some shots. If that's what they want to do, that's just fine. Oh, hello, unit of boar boys. Perhaps will be the first to dare to come down here. Going to take a couple shots from those little groms. And the little groms, if nothing else, are great against cavalry units, especially when they're in a column like this. And there we go. Boar boys come forward. And we got our big old command squad to rip them apart. Just gotta make sure that the little groms don't kill off our own uh, our own single entities. Though we do have the Salyx lullabies still. Oh, I risk that. Alright, and the first of the enemy units are down. Only, what, 39-ish more enemy units to go? And it's gonna be a while. Anyway, let's speed it back up until we can retake position. It looks like some trolls are gonna enter the fray against the command squad. Maybe a single troll for every single uh, for every single individual of these command squads. First of the trolls will get knocked down. I think one of the patriarchs actually took that first troll. Good job. And, huh, these guys tried to run past them. But I think because the rest of the trolls are engaged, they're forced to uh, re-engage the command squad rather than attempting to hit the Kossars. That said, uh, the command squad is now numerous enough so that they're blocking off shots from most of our units, and they're only able to shoot into the enemy flanks uh, rather than directly, and it looks like our regular Kossars aren't even attempting to fire. 
That doesn't matter, though, as the first of the enemy troll units goes. The command squad is pretty good at uh, dealing with such things. And this is probably a pretty darn bad use of the uh, trolls by the AI, who is much better off interspersing them among the uh, piles and piles of orc infantry that they have. Anyway, it looks like second unit of trolls is uh, nearly out of there. The uh, enemy orc boys move on in to attempt to reinforce, but they uh, will start taking shots from our armored cossars at least, and hopefully soon our regular cossars as well. And our little groms are still firing. Looks like the trolls are pretty much out of there, wavering now, and the, frankly, the orc boys aren't faring much better in this particular situation. And we're about three quarters of the way to the enemy, uh, uh, to the enemy key building already. When will they start properly defending and converge the rest of their forces? They can't hold out like this forever. The AI does tend to have that behavior where it tries to back off into the enemy settlement, but it, because this settlement has a key building relatively close to us, it should, uh, it should get every unit moving in to support shortly, as it will react when you're attempting to capture the main settlement and send everything there to uh, stop you. Anyway, it looks like the oh, little Grom smashes uh, into one of those... I don't know, oil things? Uh, some kind of oil refinery infrastructure? by the looks of it. And we've got more trolls, stone trolls this time. I'm gonna do a little bit of tanking, and we've now separated our command squad a little bit. Four for the trolls, or five for the trolls, and the rest for Grimgor. Yorogni will attempt to uh, target Grimgor, while Gotrick will attempt to target the uh, Black Orc big boss uh, that they brought. Do still have to be careful, but we do have that Taurus battle him working for us. Unfortunately, we do have to be get used to the uh, sort of targeting runes, as the mod didn't seem to work uh, to take them away or rather it does work it's just that it uh, it interferes with some of SFO's abilities specifically the Taurus battle him and probably others just the one that I noticed and thus we don't want it to do that anyway we pop a heart of winter in the middle of the enemy blood to slow them down and allow more of our range units to do work though uh, unfortunately our frost main has started to take quite a bit of damage uh, she's done about 44 45k damage herself as the Heart of Winter is still going before it fades away. Unfortunately, she has barely any mana, so I think that's the only spell that she can cast throughout the rest of the uh, throughout the rest of the battle cast. Sorry about the wonky camera work. This damn pipe is uh, not making it easy. Um, but anyway, our command squad is in, and our little Groms are getting a little bit closer because we're going to send them in to function like steam, steam tanks or chariots uh, and attack the enemy. But we do want to run out of ammunition on our armored cossars before we send them in. That's the regular armored cossars, however, we've got ones uh, that are built for melee, so we're going to send these guys in. Although perhaps what I should have done is waited on the Heart of Winter until they had applied dampen and, and the uh, magical or spell resistance reduction to the enemy. Anyway, how are we doing uh, back here? Grimgor's lost about, uh, let's say, 20% of his HP, and Yorogni's about the same, but Grimgor's... And a level 21, and Yorogni is only a level 7 so far. We gotta level him up. That said, oh, there's a pipe on the side too, damn. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate, just gonna have to deal with it. Maybe I should have, uh, yeah, I should have moved it forward, but I didn't know that the pipe was here and would interfere with the replay. Or at the very least would interfere with the camera. Anyway, keep on firing armored cossars. You have limited ammunition compared to the regular cossars, so when you run out you can join the fray and help out the, uh, uh help out the watchmen in the night. We're a very cool looking Kossar, you know, I love those ice swords that they've got. Good use of recycling the uh, ice guard assets, although, huh, look a little bit different. Maybe they are different, I don't know, I gotta recheck what the uh, specific swords used by the ice guard look like, the uh, twin blade ice guard, I mean. But what I do know is these guys are great, and they work pretty great as well, as we can see cutting through boys and squigs and uh, whatnot. 
Biggins and regular boys and gabos and squigs, it's all the same. And to the Watchmen in the night as well. Of course, our command squad is in the middle of all this pile of enemy units. And man, if only we had had mana. But since we have no mana, we're going to have to brawl our way through this. And ooh, Grimgore, a very conspicuous target right in the middle of this, turning to fight Gotrek, having moved away from Yorogni for some reason. But Yorogni having una been unable to move due to being stuck in the uh, press of enemies right there. I don't even know how Gotrek managed to spot, or rather how Grimgore managed to spot Gotrek over the heads of all the other guys, because even Gotrek's mohawk is, let's say, lower to the ground than, uh, uh, than everybody else. Anyway, the battle continues, the bounce power is in our favor as we continue to hack, slash, axe, arrow, and gun our way through the piles of enemy units, and I'm having a grand time with this particular battle. Admittedly, it's not tactically very interesting, because there's not really much to do in just to brawl our way through, but this is the kind of battle that you can rarely, if ever, get in vanilla. I mean, we're at 14 minutes in, and we've been fighting like this for quite the while. Anyway, looks like Grimgore will activate Grimgore's Wa, giving him a 15 melee attack and or giving his entire army a lots of melee attack and damage but then we activate that towards battle him to reduce their melee attack by 25 in the hopes of uh, it not being as effective. Hey, Jujin is leading some of his forces in here as well. It looks pretty bloody. Getting some work with that big ol' axe, ain't ya? And of course the enemy has their own range supported a little bit of elevation uh, advantage to them as well. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, did I count this one? No. Six units of archers firing down on us, orcs and gobos alike. There's an additional unit of archers here which was for a while firing but for some reason I think backed off. And ooh, Grimgore is down to just under half HP though I think a few of our units are hurt as well. Gotrek, as I recall, was... Yeah, I can't, I can't even select his icon there. Gotrek's around the same amount of HP as Grimgore is in here. And Felix is now fighting with Gotrek together as well. And it looks like a few of our Cossars have decided to either try to take some shots at Grimgore or possibly take a few shots at the uh, Stone Trolls in here as well. Grimgore activates that Bloodforged Armor again, much more of a issue for this army by virtue of not being silenced. Uh, the Golden Knight uh, having silenced his abilities due to uh, her uh, uh, Totem of Ursus ability. Makes Grimgore a much easier target. Anyway, finally, it looks like most of the Kossars, armored Kossars, have run out of ammunition and have just closed the distance into the melee now as we continue attempting to make our way up the ramp. I expect that uh, it'll go a lot better on this side, both due to the presence of the Saliax Lullaby and the command squads as well. It looks like Grimgore is nearly done for, down to about 10% of his HP, and finally broken as well. And the Watchmen and the Knight continue to fight. And what is this ability that is probably Dodge's Song of Interest Sunlight? Well, it's something. Alrighty, making our way forward now. I don't know if Grimgore has dropped. Yes, indeed, he has. I don't know who got the kill there. Uh, but with Grimgore done, uh, that will make the rest of us quite a bit easier. And we can see the morale shock causing a lot of enemy units to waver at the same time. What a brawl, though. I don't remember the last time I had a, a brawl battle like this. Anyway, the little Groms were able to uh, move into the uh, uh, the fight for a while to act as a melee attack and got a fairly decent amount of kills and damage uh, for their trouble, but it looks like all the enemy archers have started to target the little Groms, which uh, uh, which has started to bring them down in terms of HP. Hopefully the Saliax Lullabies can heal them up. They also only have 10% missile resistance, which is a little bit unfortunate, uh, but we can get upgrades for them in the red line, which I believe gives them another 15%, which is clearly sorely needed, as if the enemy is close enough to target them with their range attacks they absolutely will and there we go we fought all from here all the way to here without spells to obliterate the enemy and just good old-fashioned blade work very nice very nice balance power at about uh, say 75 percent in our favor and now just a few more enemy melee units to work through and we just gotta keep activating our abilities as we, as we go. I do believe we're very much running out of uh, Saliax uh, lullabies at this point, however. 
between our three Patriarchs, we did have nine of them, so I'm sure they were instrumental in keeping both the Watchmen in the Night and the other units alive as well. Specifically the single entities. And we're so close to making our way up the ramp. The Cossars are engaged or continue, I should say, to be engaged in a shootout with the enemy archers. And the balance of power continues to climb in our favor. What biggins and some trolls attempting to fight still on this flank. We're going to send the little groms back into the fray, but we can see the enemy is still targeting them and ignoring our Cossars, which are firing on them. I guess it prioritizes the little groms. Uh, but we've healed them back up a little bit with that uh, Saliax lullaby. And sooner rather than later, the armored Cossars will make their way up the hill and then rip those archers apart. Since it's taking far too long, it seems to uh, have the uh, ranged Cossars or the unarmored Cossars uh, do the work. Anyway, Yorogni heads on in. We got to bail on out the uh, units on this flank since they didn't have our uh, command squad or the Watchmen in the night helping them out and only the little Groms. And with the command squad charging into the back of those uh, biggins, I imagine they're just about out. Nearly up the ramp now. Looks like the enemy had a few units of spider riders and uh, boar boys and regular boys still held in reserve that it sends down in a last-ditch attempt to hold us back. And it looks like the first of our watchmen in the night crest of that ramp and or hill and have made it nearly to the enemy capture point. Bounce power about 85, maybe 90% in our favor. Command squad continues making our way up as well. And it looks like the enemy's left flank has collapsed. And as soon as we just draw close to the enemy capture point, it looks like the enemy army will rout and the battle will be ours at last. There we go. Damn, what a fun battle, and I love the fact that we could get uh, so many, uh, so much of a sort of a focus on the Watchmen in the Night. They did great. 225 kills. Very, very solid. Anyway, battle will end. A Pyrrhic victory for us, probably due to all the ammunition expenditure. I don't imagine we took that much damage. Huh. Well, I guess we'll find out how much uh, damage we really took here. We did basically run out of ammunition on all of these units, and our Drujina was uh, uh, was restocking ammunition on the various unarmored Cossars. It was a lot of enemy works to cut through in a single location. After all, look at this massive pile of corpses. Oh man, that was an awesome, awesome brawl. Uh, definitely one of the longest brawl battles that I remember doing in uh, recent times. Just having to hack our way through two full stacks of orcs led by Grimgore with his constant waz spamming. And we essentially had to repeatedly counteract the waz with the uh, Taurus battle hymns as, as well. 424 kills on your Agni versus... 420, nice on uh, on uh, Gotrick as well. Very, very, very close this time around. And lots and lots of work for our Watchmen in the Night, who are instrumental in hacking their way, as we can see by the kill counts through the enemy, outdoing all the range units and melee units by a mile. In terms of damage and kills, uh, Little Grounds didn't quite do as much as I'd like to, but the sort of ramp that they were on prevented them from firing at the enemy without risking fire firing on our own units, and, well, it's better not to risk that. Anyway, uh, we'll reoccupy for Dorjni Vord for ourselves. Grimgore is down, and we get the uh, armor plus 50, armor piercing weapon damage plus 50 from Hide Striker on your Agni. And province re-secured. We have no defenses here, but I'm... Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure whether we should bother building them back up. We kept the market. You know what? Don't bother building the defenses. I'm not going to invest in the place for now. Just uh, wake and land, leave them as they are. We will move past this, but I think we will move past them with Victor Zambin. Ooh, who's reached rank 12. Very nice. Uh, now, the thing we want here is Tull's Judgment. We've been saving points. Unfortunately, this is the army that isn't uh, the Akshina Ambusher army, though I suppose we could replace the regular Kossars here with Akshina Ambushers. They would be stronger, even if they, uh, uh, even if they don't have much in the way of range. 
And we could still take advantage of the power-ups they get here. Although I suppose then we lose out on the benefits of Man of the People. But we can have this for now and that later. Ooh, casualty punishment rate, yes please. And tells Fury as well. We'll see how this ability uh, functions, or at the very least, how well it works it afterwards. It's also level you guys up. Max out replenish troops as we clearly need it. And Dodger's Song, Winter Sunlight. And same with you. Replenish troops, Dodger's Song. Lovely. All right. Unfortunately, I did make a... Oh, I was about to say, I made a mistake with that battle in moving Eurogni's army in rather than Victor Zaman, but no, I lied. Uh, we've lost most of the mana on most of our armies due to the massive loss of mana we had from the... Uh, uh, there was a debuff here. Not Dangerous Winds, the other one, when they combined together. But now... We need to start channeling and getting those back. That said, in order to reduce the amount of cash it takes, we should probably... Eh, it's only 400. A little decent to Matt. Plus, you actually need to heal more, don't you, than Eurogni's army does. Eurogni, you can channel. You're at rank 10 now. And we basically want these two guys to be at rank 12. Eurogni hits for 640 prior to any buffs. Looking pretty good so far. He has best of the court, which will buffle... Buffle? Uh, buffle up. Uh... <laughs> Buffle up. Uh, <laughs> it's like buckle. <laughs> I don't know why that amused me so much. Uh, okay, now that's going to be a phrase that I'm going to keep saying. Great. Good job, everyone else. Uh, <laughs> this is how half the stuff I say. Uh, this is how half the stuff I say happened. Uh, that's why I say swubbly. It's why I say what up, my freaks. It's why I say uh, a bunch of things. Uh, anyway, that distracted me. <laughs> Buffle up. Uh, born to command, I guess we want to get our banner fly still for the world leadership production. I guess the... Well, we can't reach it right now anyway. But what we can do is give the domestic orders... Oh, actually, you know what? In Yorogni's army, that probably won't do too much, will it? Could give him more armor. Melee defense when defending for the Lord's army. What's the likelihood that the Yorogni's army is going to be defending? Uh, I'm inclined to say... And Gotrick and Felix are free as well. Yeah, nonetheless. Nonetheless, why did I go that anyway? Because we're going to put the Acolytes of Ursin in his army, and while other stuff as well, we just need to be careful about uh, negativing ourselves yet again. You... I mean, you will probably want to get Sons of Kislev. We could probably just put a bunch of basic Kossars and Kislevite warriors in your army's army for now until he gets better stuff. Now, the thing about this is, okay, now we want replenished troops. Maxed out. The thing about this is it's not going to be useful until we get Red War Chant, but we do want that Red War Chant. Eventually. Anyway, now let's see what else we got to do this turn. Wow, the main thing, Kislev. We're back. 6,000? Yeah, that's a pretty significant reduction down from 9.3k or something like that. And that'll allow us to tier 5 several things. They'll still be expensive, mind you, but, uh, well, we may as well build them up. Though, I, I hope I don't forget this, we gotta remember to build the Mason's Guild first, because it'll reduce the construction cost even further before we do the rest of those buildings. Nice. Erengrad, yes, you are going up as well. Erengrad Stanitsa, definitely the port slash harbor. The pottery won't provide any additional growth, unfortunately, so I think we want to maximize growth. That's why we're not collecting the income for a while. So instead, we'll build whatever builds growth here, and that's the Tallow Keeper's Guild as the first thing. We also need to protect it if somebody comes here, like these jerks. That's why Gavril Talichev is here. Oh, actually, speaking of Gavril Talichev, go to Cargo, grab that real quick for us. And move back to Castle Alexandrinov immediately after a sale to Reconnaught to resolve. I mean, I was going to delete most of these guys anyway. I mean, we don't necessarily have to delete the Kossars. On the other hand, do it. We are Kislev! It'll mean more money in the coffers every turn. It's not a big enough deal, I think, for us to be concerned. Then take the pardon captives as well. Now, the thing is, these aren't spear cossars, so they're not going to be particularly useful for us. Knight Ward. Huh. Knight Ward enemy hero action success chance minus 10, eh? Uh, no, f not for you. War Horse Treasury. Damn. Materials at sea. If only. Oh, if we had gotten materials at sea. <laughs> Uh, well, we gotta keep looking for him. Uh, it would be too easy otherwise. I want the Knight Sword on you, since you're out here and you're, let's say, the most likely to die. Uh, Knight Sword, not Knight Squire. Knight Squire is the upkeep production for Acolytes and Zargard and stuff. Go back down here, I guess. 41. 41, huh. It 
increased. 44? Maybe we loop around all the way this way. Wait, why the heck do... Oh, treaties with Hexawaddle and Exiles of Nehek. I was wondering why the uh, these particular Wood Elves didn't like us. Man, I don't like the 44% negative outcome. I gotta find a better place. For now, though. And there's the failure. Three failures in a row. That's how you become Beledna. Ah, uh, the failure. Anyway. Vladimir Mikheyev, you are heading to the Port of Secrets, and I believe that hasn't changed. I do hope that there isn't a full stack to immediately kill you after you do this. And Mr. Demon Princey will be back shortly, but nonetheless... We don't have time to fight this battle this episode, I guess. Oh, yeah, we're... Oh, wow, that battle took a long time. I didn't even realize. Uh, we're going to manually fight... You know what? This is a garbage garrison. I'll fight this between the episodes again because we can't auto-resolve this and this is a horrific waste of time. And we will have a capital settlements and other well-defended places with defenses and stuff out here. We can fight those on screen, but that it doesn't put a smile on my face. Anyway, we will also want to keep recruiting with Mother Stanky, get a couple of uh, things in the woods for her. A couple more, I should say. You gotta remember that the Kosovite archers are going to Igor Talichev. And, you know what we could do? We could temporarily transfer, temporarily transfer the Kossars to him. There's potential for that as well. Hmm. That's nice. Also, let's double check the agreements. Damn those elves for cancelling our trade agreements. I'm not surprised. But I'm kind of also past being disappointed in elves. Uh, let's see. You're willing to give us 2.5k to peace out. We will kill you anyway. What's the likelihood that we go all the way to Sarl encampment in the next few turns? I'd say low. And turns, eh? Hmm. It's free 2.5k. You know what? We don't need to move out there or up there immediately. So we'll do the peace. Flotilla. For now, and then we'll knock him out afterwards. It's probably more important that we uh, make some headway in knocking out Wolfric, though frankly, if Castaldon can hold yeah, Bay of Blades for us, that would be swell, and yeah. Uh, also, let's build up the taverns here for the additional growth. I want Tower of Crack to be leveled up to Tier 3, or Tier two, tier 3, ASAP, so that we can upgrade the Silent Grove here, thereby getting Exhina Ambushers, which are going to uh, make up uh, the, well... A big portion of this army. I also want some ice guard in there as well, because I'd like to see how combining stagger shot with a 50% missile, 50% uh, speed plus the missile resistance, how well this will combine with the ice guard's frostbite. And potentially some slowdown spells as well. Anyway, Beledna the Defender, Archie. Uh, okay, wait, Beledna. And there's no way he can reach you here. So you're going to go all the way down here. You're just here to transfer the stuff. And you're moving down here, you're moving down here. Is that everybody else? It looks like it pretty much is. And that includes Bullet now, which is fine. Uh, I think with that, folks, I am going to probably call this episode here. There's probably a little bit more of the admin to do as we have to figure out uh, what needs to be built to where and what we can afford, considering Kislev is about to take most of our cash away by virtue of having to build stuff. Uh, well, stuff isn't crazy expensive. It's still invested in it right now. Now, once again, we can't have the construction cost reducer man in every single location. It's just not feasible at the current time, so we'll just do it like this. And we'll need money-making provinces, and since troll country's in the center of our... Well, other than Castle Alexander enough, uh, sort of in the center of our territories, we will try to grow it as fast as possible. So that means roadhouses, markets, and farms as well. Lovely. All right, anyway, as I said, I'm going to call it here. Next time, we proceed with Victor Zambin and his Kossar army towards Saber Mountain and start working on Grimgore in revenge uh, for, well, taking our settlement here and down by a single tier. And Serena Catrin should get her first battle, I would expect, against Archaeon. Plus, we're at 450 out of 600 now. Very, very close to that uh, to that final confederation uh, with the orthodoxy. As for Boris Ursus, I still haven't decided. Uh, what we might do is we might revive him as soon as we reclaim his original starting position. Uh, maybe that's the way to do it. Although, on the other hand, when uh, lords get sort of knocked out like this, I don't usually feel too bad because eventually I'd love to play a run as, for example, Castalton, and there we could confederate uh, Boris Ursus as well. So I'll still think about it. We'll see how the rest of the 
the uh, well how the next few episodes in the confederation and stuff goes i do like the campaigns being different from each other when playing the same faction after all and especially considering that castalton starts very very close and uh, to uh, to the ice court and there's that but anyway more ice court to come for now let me know your thoughts on all that as well don't forget to leave those likes and comments below especially the threshold if you're into that sort of thing for the hour-long episode i'll glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching